find out. Ambrose has again selected drivers right. The crowd comes to their feet one more time. Three laps to go when we get the green flag. They make their way down and again the starters holding on and holding on. It's a late start. It is and he finally gives them the green flag. Hang on. Well, the top ten are going to make it through. Sadler gets bumped out. Oh, you see Mike Waddell out in that speedy drive, guys. No grip out there. Now, Stevens moved up to third. It is Ambrose out in front of Tagliani. Stephen Wallace with what would be a career best run if he can hang on to that position. McDowell really got himself in a bad position by being on the outside with all that speedy drive. He saw his car slipping and sliding. Steven got underneath him and got going. Another clean start, guys, from turn one and two. It surprises the heck out of us, doesn't it? It we does were, me. We are expecting worse. Let's give the guy in fifth place a ring of the bell because Brian Scott, whoa, whoa look out. McDowell is he get in the course. dirt and almost got so loose and turned it around. He saves it nicely. That was a big save. He had one tire in the grass. Brian, it's a hard way to break. Brian Scott has one top five in his entire nationwide career. Here he is on a road course, and there he is running in fifth. And there's Eric Almarola with his string of top ten still going strong as he is at a, a good run. Like, look at this. The 32 of Rick oh, it goes around. Bad for our point guy. He had come so far. He was second to points just then, guys, by two points behind Ricky Stenhouse. This is going to hurt him big time. We'll drop to the back of the McDowell field. McDowell making a pass here. Taking a peek on the inside of Stephen Wallace as they go into 13. Can he make it stick? Little contact up over the curves. They both survive. Well, that's as good as that can turn out. You see Stephen choosing to block a little on the inside, position himself for turn one. Two laps remaining on this 2.7 mile circuit. Wallace trying to hold off Scott. Looks like it was a little contact there. And courtesy of the uh, bumper cam, there was no doubt about it. <laughs> well, you can tell the intensity heating up. No, oh, Ricky Stenhouse, Stenhouse goes around. That was our point leader right there. That so, is great for Reed Sorensen. We got a race again here, guys. And he's got smoke out that right side. Is it a tire rub? Uh-oh. Remember the fact that the Roush engines, they've had some problems lately. I think that's tire rub. I think you're right. I think, I think it is. is. Boy, it's falling apart for a lot of the points contenders here late in the race. Elliot Sadler's, he's got, he dropped to 12. Marcus Ambrose doesn't know all the excitement that is going on behind him. And look at this. Tied for second, oh. 17 back would be Sorensen and Sadler. Scott Speed overheating big time, guys. Shooting a lot of water out of that 33 car. You think he might have some brass on the front of the grill? He's yeah, got, he's got a lap and a half to go, and I guarantee he's not going to stop to pull it off. The driver tissue melts down. That's all you can do, Marty. Exactly right. Danica Patrick locked up. Yeah, she's, she's got brake issues still again. Still. Oh, right into Ron Fellow. She hit him accidentally. It's a tough part of the course. She was running 13th. Has a good run going despite all the brake issues. She's going to lose a couple more spots here. And at Marty, it looks like a right rear corner panel's tore up big time. And there's still problems for Stenhouse. Remember, we talked oh, about it is how motor. It what? is motor. I was wondering, guys. You're right. Yeah, it's coming apart. To turn into turn 10. And we've got a full course caution. No, with, unbelievable. But the final lap is out. No, we've got the white flag Check flying, it. Marty. Check we got it. The white yes. flag. Don't have to worry about it. No, it is a final lap. So it's going to be a full run to the finish. Yeah, Marcus is just saying to himself, all I got to do is have a solid lap, no mistakes. Hit my marks. Don't miss those shifts. These things are second nature for him. Oh, and that turn 14 is what got him a couple years now. When he hits the rump of the pump right there, he got him out of control. Okay, He's got to be thinking that. Let's give a little credit to uh, uh, his substitute driver while he was gone. A friend growing up, Owens. Yep, good drive he did for Marcos, getting that car set up. Owen Kelly did Owen a great Kelly, job. Yeah, Owen Kelly. Did. And that was Marcus' decision. Just a few corners left in the Napa 200. And the demons for Marcus Ambrose in less than two weeks will be taken care of on both the cup and nationwide level. Okay, this is a tough part right here into turn 10. A lot of drivers trying to outbreak each other into here. 
Does this get through this corner? He does a great job, Marcos does. Alex Tagliani there in second with McDowell close by in third. Stephen Wallace still in a career best position of fourth. And Brian Scott with a sneaky little run. He never really cracked the top five until the end. What about Alex Tagliani? He'll take a look at uh, Michael McDowell trying to make a pass. Lee. Sees better, gets back in line, guys. Marcos Ambrose went through a lot to get here. He's thinking right now it was all worth it. Takes the corner nice and smooth this time. Comes down the long front straightaway. Brian and, Scott. Oh, around. Brian Scott gets awesome turned. Awesome job, Marcus Ambrose. Awesome job, son. Nice job, guys. And Marcus Ambrose gets the win. Exciting run. We make it without rain, guys. This is a very entertaining race. Great race, great race. Brian Scott ends up coming in in 12th position after the last corner spin. And look how wounded that car is. Awesome job, guys. Second race in a row for Richard Petty Motorsports. He wins Watkins Glen last week. And he wins again here at Montreal, Canada. The very appreciative fans. They wanted one of their Canadian drivers to win, but they all will salute the champion. Richard Petty and Andrew Merstein, the two got to be excited about their driver, Marcos Andros, what he's done. Really proud for him. And let's check in with Shannon Spade. She's caught up with a very happy winning crew chief. I'm telling you, a very happy crew chief. You guys had so much to overcome, starting in the back. You had a substitute driver for practice and qualifying. What was the key to getting this victory today? Man, uh, when uh, when Marcos got spun out there, uh, I think by the 22, he was so determined, man. The car was really fast. The uh, Richard Petty Motorsports DeWalt car was just so awesome. Uh, I don't know. He's the man. He is just the man. And I think the crew down here, they're, they're pretty good, too. Guys? All right. Thank you, Shannon, as the celebration is just beginning here in Montreal, Quebec.